Yo, what's going on, you pickle munching Pissimians? Today we're gonna be playing some games with Blastoise, Blastoise GX. This is the list that I've been currently rocking for the deck. Man, I'm not sure about this deck yet. It's been, it's fun when it sets up. Um, it's very powerful, I feel like, when it does set up, but sometimes it just struggles to set up, man. I'm going with the heavy Articuno build to shut down the Guzmas. We can't let our Squirtles get knocked out because we need to set up two different Blastoises to actually get this deck flowing. Ideally, we set up two of these and one of these at some point, and then we max push on this guy. Keep him alive, and he just draws all of our prizes. So that's our game plan. Articuno early. Um, transition into a one Blastoise GX, and that Blastoise GX usually will be able enough to clean up the game. Sometimes we use the guy with the Hydro Tackle to do some damage as well. Um, so this is the list I've been playing. Pretty straightforward, pretty consistent. We got the four Cynthia, four Lily, only two Guzma, because we don't need a Guzma that often. Twelve Water, uh, four Poke Gear to find that early Lily and keep the Cynthias and draw supports in general going. I got two War Turtle in here right now, um, and two Timer Ball, because I've been finding it like it's just hard to set up Blastoises, man. It's hard to hit the Candy combo. Um, so the increase in War Turtle has helped out quite a bit. Um, and yeah, that's basically all I got to say on the list. We got one Let Loose March Shadow for some draw, ability draw, Pokemon support. And with the one Let Loose March Shadow, I don't really care if he gets Guzma early on. If I put him down and they Guzma around to bring up, or Guzma around my Articuno to bring up a March Shadow, I don't really care. So, uh, yep, yeah, that's the list. Let's go ahead and get to some games and see how it runs. Another one here. Pretty reasonable hand, especially if this thing finds us a Lily. We are going first as well, and we're going to get to draw a Mulligan. Just keeps getting better and better. Take a look. We're playing against... Some kind of counter box deck. I don't know. There's an Umbreon and and an E Power and Lightning. So I'm assuming it's some kind of Zapdos deck that also plays Umbreon to like counter attack stuff. So that's okay. I'm not really scared of that at all, actually, though. Um, should be a pretty free dub as long as we can set up and do stuff. So we'll see here. I would like to draw another card. Guzma, not great. Oh, it's the Stunfisk desk. Stun Fisk deck, of course. Um, should check Poke Gear before we use the Ultra Ball. There we go. There's that Lily. Um, Booklet Hill. Just need to set up a bunch of the boys. I'm gonna go ahead and attach active because it's very likely we'll be attacking with this. It's also possible it dies. Um, so maybe I should attach the Squirtle actually. I don't think Guzma's gonna be very important. Water energy, I think, is gonna be a little bit more important. Get ourselves another Squirtle here. Yeah, I probably should have attached to the bench. I don't know what the heck I was thinking now that I'm thinking about it. And then Lily for six. Pretty good draw so far. I kind of want to get another Squirtle. I'm gonna get rid of Lily and Ultra Ball. Get myself a third Squirtle here. Put that guy down. And then eh, I almost want to use the Turn Ball as well. I'm gonna pass over to our opponent though. Let them have their turn now. We're gonna, we are going to be able to candy out this Blastoise immediately. We won't be able to get the other one. I guess there's a really good chance we actually get knocked out. I should have definitely attached to the bench here. I forgot that the Articuno is weak to lightning. So, very good chance that Stunfisk is going to take the knockout here on the Articuno. Actually, almost like 100% of the time is going to get Yeah, attaching to the bench was way better. I don't know what I was thinking there. Um, if you guys know what I was thinking there, tell me in the comment section down below. Because I'm, I'm lost on what I was thinking that. Yeah, I mean, as long as they find a DC, I guess they could whiff the DCE, right? But even then, Raging raging Thunder is just going to knock us out with one E power. So, like, the chance of them whiffing a knockout here on our active is just insanely low. They would have to, like, completely whiff energy, I guess. Yeah, that's what they would have to do. They would have to whiff energy, like, all their energy. And then and then they would whiff, I guess. That would be the... That's it. That's the key right there. They'd have to completely whiff energy. All right. Whatever. I messed up. It's fine. We're just going to get out Double Candy Blastoise next turn, and we'll be fine. That's that's the game plan. That's the positive thinking I need here. There's a Lily for six. These things do hit pretty hard. I can use Articuno to, to like combat them, though, and just kind of not like put the Blastoise in the line of fire. Um, we are going to need to use a lot of Blastoise to get like a head on the prize trade, though, for sure. That's going to be like our game plan. Why didn't I attach to the bench, man? I'm still going over that in my head now. I should just attach to the bench. I didn't fully take into what we're playing. Um, I've actually tried out this deck recently myself. Um, I found it to be pretty terrible, um, and I would not recommend it to anyone. The Stunfisk Spiritomb deck is just not... It just doesn't quite get there. Uh, it, tries, it gets close. It gets close, I feel like, but not quite... I didn't quite realize what the attack did. I thought that the attack was for each damage counter on each of your Pokemon. It's actually each... Pokemon, each damaged Pokemon you haven't played does 30 times, so it's, it really is quite terrible. Um, the Stunfisk. I thought it was way better than it was. Not so, not so much, though. So. Choice Band here is a little bit awkward for my opponent. I probably should have been on the, one of the Bench Spiritombs. Um, well, 
There's the Eevee. I think I'm gonna assume because they play the Umbreon, they play basic dark energy, actually. So I'm gonna assume they play basic darks if they play the Umbreon. Um, it's the only thing that really makes sense. The only reason to really play the Umbreon is to get that quick evolution out of your deck out of nowhere, which is nice. Um, there's the rainbow. So if they have a switch, nope. The switch won't even knock us out, actually. All right, so we survived despite my horrible mistake. And now we're in the chill zone. Let's see what we can pull off. All right, double tails. That's just what I wanted. <clears throat> so I guess we're going to be setting up a cold cyclone here. And if we get the candy other blastoise, we can move it. Yeah, we did get it. All right, and we can just go start going for knockouts. Well, I say we get it, but then we hit four tails on timer ball. So not quite... Uh, it's going to be the Cold Cyclone, uh, and we move him back to the other Articuno. You know what? Sometimes you just you hit four tails on your timer balls, and then that happens. It's a little annoying, but uh, whatever. We'll work through it. I'm only slightly tilted by that. Uh, we'll be fine, though. I'll survive. I hope. I think so. I'm actually not sure. That was a pretty big blow. Um, we're going to avoid putting Articunos in play here from here on out. I think we just want to make our bench... Just Blastoise from here on out after this Articuno goes up and knocks out this Stunfisk, which will probably happen. Uh, well, yeah, because they can't Guzma. So, yeah. Once this Articuno comes up, knocks out the Stunfisk, we are going to transition to not binding chain any more Articunos because we want to make it hard for our opponent to take knockout. Um, the Spirit Tombs can actually get to the point where they one shot the bench, the baby Blastoises, the ones that get the water energy. So, that's kind of scary, actually. Um, yeah, that is actually pretty scary that it can get to that point. Um, but we'll deal with that when that comes around. So we don't want to, we want to like make it so our opponent just can't draw prizes by just having the big Blastoise GXs in play and just being like, well, you can't, you can't do anything. Um, you have to hit into us and then we're just going to max potion. There's the knockout with the, what is it? Electric trap knocking out our Articuno. That's fine. Build up his spite, spite yeah, build up his spite on the spirit tombs. And then we'll be probably knocking us out. That's fine with me. And like I said, we'll get the return knockout with this Articuno. Move those back to the Blastoise. Play this Cynthia. Hopefully top deck a Blastoise. Top deck Ultra Ball would be okay as well. Uh, we only have one of those left. Top, top deck a War Turtle would be great as well. Um, ideally, just give us a Blastoise though. That would be excellent. Or a or War Turtle. i take a Blastoise or a War Turtle. Uh, either of them works for me at this point, actually. All right, go Articuno. Also, we don't think we want... No, I don't think it'll, they play that. And there's the Blastoise. That actually works perfectly. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. And we're going to go ahead and use the Powerful Squall before we... Um, I don't want to put them like this. Powerful Squall before we Cynthia, so that way our Cynthia has a better chance to draw us better cards. Yeah, because not going to Brooklyn Hill again. We don't want any more Articunas at this point. Um, War Turtle is super cool, though. He's a super cool guy. Um, and then, yeah, Cold Cyclone for the knockout. Move those back to this Blastoise GX on the bench. Um, we'll have a nice little home over there and get our prize card. What do we got? Ooh, pokey gear. Cynthia would definitely be way better than the Lily on this next turn. Top deck of Blastoise again would be great. We have another rare candy. Uh, either Blastoise would work fine here. Um, I assume their deck plays Shrine of Punishment. Uh, we do have the Brooklet Hills for that um, to be able to keep those bumped. We do play four Brooklet Hill. Want to be aggressive about finding our Articunos and Squirtles early on. So yeah, we do play the four of those. And yeah, just going to transition to Blastoise EX and we'll see where it goes. I'm actually not sure... I mean, these things hit pretty hard um, as they build up, actually. So we kind of have to, like, max potion this thing every turn. But that might just be enough for us to get ahead in the prize trade and then, like, remain ahead. We'll have to see. I kind of want to always leave one energy on this Blastoise just in case they choose to Guzma around it. I don't want to go to zero and then have them, like, KR only powerful squall in play. That's another thing we're going to be looking to do. We'll see here. They're definitely taking their time on deciding what to bring up here. Uh, this guy works for a knockout. Um, this guy also works if they have a dark energy. This guy also works if they have a DCE. I would imagine they would have a darker DC in their hands. So they should really be sending up one of these depending on that. Yep, there's the dark energy. Gonna go get the boy Umbreon here. And we kind of lucked out a little bit that they whiffed that first turn KO, actually. Just a little bit. Uh, things would have definitely gotten a little bit uh, unfortunate if they had hit that. Uh, here's the Retaliate 120. Cleaning up our Articuno with that 110 HP. Uh, and then we're going to transition into the Blastoise GX from there. I always forget that this is not a tag team. It only gives up two prizes. I don't know why I always forget that, but I, I do. I always forget this thing does not give up three prizes. All right. Uh, yeah, Retaliate, knocking out our Articuno. And then building up all this uh, spite on these Spiritombs on the bench in the meantime. 
Yeah, this game's all about the max potions. We really need to try and, well, we need to set up more Blastoises, but we also really need to try and fully utilize these max potions. And ideally, if we can get all these things evolved <coughs> before they get picked off, um, that would also be ideal as well. As they continue to build up that spite. And they, they do max out at the 160, which is annoying because that's this guy's HP, which means he just goes down um, to the, uh, I don't know what the anguish cry. But this deck could definitely fizzle out pretty fast. Um, I'm surprised they don't play Jirachi at all. Or it seems like they don't play Jirachi at all. Jirachi seems pretty good in here to me. Uh, but we haven't seen one yet from our opponent. Alright, go Blastoise. Let's see what our top deck is. There's that Ultra Ball. Um, I don't actually know which one's more important to get out here. Might be this one, actually. Yeah, this one might be the more important one to get out, actually. Um, and then I will just literally for force, because I'm going to keep the max potion in hand. I guess I could have Powerful Scald first. Oof, might have drawn one of those. Um, I'll attach one here. Yeah. And then... Rocket Splash, get rid of these two. Knock out on this Umbreon. We definitely are going to need at least one more Blastoise at some point to come out. To have enough water energy in play to actually keep taking prizes. That could come in, that could become an issue actually here in a little bit. Actually, we should have definitely Powerful Scald first and got extra energy in play. Um, to make it to the point where we don't, we can just like keep moving the energy off of not our active one. Uh, he is setting this one up, which makes you think he doesn't have a Guzma in hand. Which is super good for us. Him not having a Guzma is super good for us. There's a Thunder Mountain... So they might play Coco GX, which is something I also have to play around then. Well, there's the Hustle Belt. Um, I don't think he ever one-shots us, which is great. Um, yeah, that extra 60 damage is a little bit... Actually, it's not even that annoying, because he's hitting 160 minus 30, 130. So he was always setting up a two-shot. So the Hustle Belt probably should have been saved for a different Spirit Tomb here from our opponent. Um, yeah, that doesn't make a ton of sense. Uh, and with these Rocket Splashes, we only actually have to remove one energy, which is actually super cool. Or super good for us. I guess it is also super cool. Super cool and good for us. That works out. I wonder if we can remove away this energy. Don't need energies on the Powerful Squall, guys. Do need another Powerful Squall, though. That'd be nice to set up a second Powerful Squall. And it looks like that's going to be pretty easy here. Um, as long as we're able... As if this finds us a draw supporter, I would bet on us finding one. We have three Cynthia left, 70 cards in deck. Good chance we find the Cynthia, play the Cynthia. Good chance we find the Powerful Squall. Though it's not necessary for us to hit the Powerful Squall this turn. It'd just be nice. There's an Ultra Ball, looks like a fail. And then I'm ready for that Anguish Cry. Another Lily from our opponent, get themselves four more cards. And yeah, I definitely think they should be at least playing one Spirit Tomb in this, or one Jirachi in this deck, because, I mean, they even play a Skateboards. Um, no Jirachi kind of makes no sense in here. I feel like this deck is definitely likely to fizzle out at some point without some extra draw power. 190. It's a lot of damage, but not quite enough to knock out the big guy. All right. Uh, so Brooklyn Hill definitely want to replace that. Um, definitely want to max potion this guy, and then definitely want to hit an energy off of. Well, we should Poke Gear first to increase our chances to hit the energy. Because um, even if I whiffed, I didn't really care. As long as I just need to really hit this powerful squall. There we go. Ooh, I'll take all of them. One, two. Um, three. Maybe activate the Guzma if we want to. I'm gonna. Shuffle that back in the deck, though, I think. Yeah, and then Cynthia. So now we can always just Guzma and send this one at the active and do that. Okay, another one. Perfect. Just what I wanted. And then we are going to... Uh, Rocket Splash. Just need to get rid of one, but I think I am going to get rid of two here. Um, leave this guy so we can still attack, with, even if we only, for some reason, hit one off of the Powerful Squalls. Um, we might be able to, like, fully thin out our deck, though. Um, with the powerful squalls, and then like Cynthia almost in guaranteed hit the max potion next turn, and then that would set us up to pretty much just win the game. Um, so that's like the ideal scenario for us to hit here. We'll see what our opponent has. Um, so I don't think they play basic lightnings, but as long as the Thunder Mountain was in play, we did have to be a little scared of Coco GX. Um, but now that that's gone, now that that rainbow's gone, I don't think Coco GX is, is a threat. I guess they probably only play the four rainbows, so Coco GX probably doesn't exist in their deck, but I guess better safe than sorry. Alright, this guy's fully loaded up. I expect a Guzma here on this bench guy, but 
that doesn't really matter, and actually we don't have to even dig for our turn if they do go for that play. Um, I don't, I'm trying to think of like some kind of uh, closer that they could potentially play, but I can't quite come up with anything um, that they would potentially play that would allow them to like close out games. Um, it's like actually one shot one of these blast slices. I just don't think they can do it. There's a Guzma. Yeah, they're going to get rid of one of our, our powerful Squallmen. Um, that's fine with me, though. I don't think it's going to matter, like I've been saying. I think we have this one pretty much locked up. We're actually going to fully commit to the, this powerful Squall next turn. Um, get as many energy in play as possible. Maybe even burn this Pokey Gear. Uh, no, I'll probably keep the Pokey Gear. I'll play the Cynthia. Uh, and then we're just three prizes away, and we should just win in, in three turns from here before our opponent can win the game. Because there's no way they ever one-shot one of our GX guys. I don't think... I mean, I guess it's it's theoretically possible, but I can't think of what the card they would play that would actually make it work. So maybe it's just not actually possible. Um, we'll see, though, here soon. Uh, there's a Spite. And then Anguish Cry for the knockout on this guy. That's fine, though. Like I said, I don't think it matters. Son of the big guy. Go, go, go. Into the active. How many Cynthia do we actually have left? One? I'm actually just gonna go ahead and burn the Pokey here. Just gonna get a bunch of energy in play. We have a Guzma left as well. Play the Cynthia, the Stretcher, if we need to refill our deck. Well, our deck gets refilled through this, so that shouldn't ever be a problem. Um. I'm just going to check what's left in the deck. The Kuzma's in there. Good. And then Rocket Splash. Just remove one off the active. Uh, maybe just one off the bench here. That'll do. Get rid of that. Boom. Knockout. And like I said, I think we have this one locked up. We'll see if our opponent has any surprises. Like I said, I don't actually fully know what's in this deck um, or what people play in it. So it's possible we get kind of surprised out of nowhere. But uh, more likely than not, I think this one's just about locked up. And we're just kind of waiting to go through the motions here. Maybe they can pull off a one shot with the Stun Fisk. I doubt it. I don't know, like four E power, Kakui, another Spiritomb, Choice Band. I, okay, so maybe that's enough. I'm not even gonna try and do the math in my head, but I guess, well, yeah, here's the start to it. He's hitting reasonably hard right now. Okay, it's, well, there's the 30 e power. All right, slow down there, bud. Don't let that be a Kakui. But it wouldn't be quite enough anyways, I don't think. Yep, there's a hit for 150. Not going to be quite enough, actually, at all. Or even close. Um, I wouldn't mind hitting the max push in this turn. I don't think the Recycler was in there. Yeah, I wouldn't mind hitting the max push in this turn. Let's go find it. Heal him up. Need to get rid of two energy here. Knockout here on the Stunfisk. And that's it. Down to one prize. The Max Potions did their work. Um, if they were ever able to two-shot a Blastoise, we actually would have lost the game before. Uh, we probably would have lost, but Max Potions... Giving us the edge in the prize trade. We didn't leave uh, too much stuff on our bench so that they could just consist consistently Guzma take knockouts. Although, I don't think they would be able to pull that off unless they played Jirachi, which it seems like they don't. So, easy dub here in the end for the Powerful Squall. Um, just kind of waiting for our opponent to pack it up at this point. See if they have any last-ditch uh, shenanigans, last-ditch effort to try and uh, prevent us from winning the game. Like I said, I don't think it exists, but I'm uh, more than welcome to... Uh, uh, more than happy to see our opponent try. They would I mean, there have to be some insane, crazy play that I've I can't even like comprehend right now for them to possibly win this game. So I'm down to see it because I would learn something new. That's for sure if they're able to pull it off. But nope, just gonna be the raging thunder. They're gonna go ahead and knock out. Oh, did you tend to their own bench? Oh, I thought it did tend to one of my bench. So that's even that's way worse than I thought it was. And that's gonna do it for the first game as we take out the Stunfist Square Tomb. Like I said. I tried it out myself. I don't think the deck is very good. I don't recommend trying it yourselves. Um, give Blasters a try. Another one here going second. Our opponent is playing. 
by the Larvitar, I would guess some kind of spread deck. So I would guess Weezing. Weezing is really the only logical spread deck to play in the current uh, meta, which is actually a very good matchup for us. Ooh, there's a Blitzel, so now I'm not so sure anymore. Uh, I'm still going to assume it's a spread deck. Spread decks in general, like I said, pretty good matchup for us. So we'll see. Yep, there we go. Coffin. All right, so they got the 1-1 one, one Zeb Striker. Maybe even a 2-2 two, two Zeb Striker here in the Weezing deck. Um, yeah, and there's a DC. Yeah, definitely a Weezing deck. Let's see what they... Ooh, getting rid of the Zeb Striker, actually. So that makes me think they probably have a 2-2 two, two Zeb Striker or they have a Stretcher in hand. Yeah, going after the Let Loose. Weird to get rid of the Zeb Striker, though, after setting up the Blitzel. Um, okay, it is going to be the Stretcher play immediately. Putting him back in the deck, and then the Let Loose coming down, trying to disrupt us. So this matchup is super good for us, as long as we're able to set up. Um, and they're doing their darndest to try and slow us down with this early Let Loose. Um, yeah, not a great hand, not a whole ton of, ton of stuff going to be played out of this. Besides the Cynthia, I don't think we could play an Ultra Ball. Nope, just going to go with the Cynthia here. Alright, going to go ahead and just grab ourselves another... Squirtle, second War Turtle is not in here. The War Turtle is super good in this matchup because it has that solid shell. Um, and we are just going to go ahead and pass back over to our opponent. So they can't KO anything next turn. Uh, I think it's pretty close, though. Um, we should be fine here, though, I think. Uh, it's also possible they whiff a way to retreat the Larvitar, and then we have another turn to kind of do whatever we want and set up from there, which is, I mean, ideal for us, not so ideal for our opponent. Um, we'll see what they have to work with here, though. Going into their turn, they use the Brooklet Hill. It looks like maybe the Let Loose did more damage to them than it did to us. Uh, we'll see here. Not moving very fast here. DC commitment to the active. Is it just going to be... Yep, the second strike for 10. All right, then. Our opponent is having the worst end of that for sure. I'm going to go ahead and get ourselves another Squirtle. I mean, what's better than uh, one Squirtle on your bench, two Squirtles on your bench? Um, I'm just going to evolve the active here, I think. Attach active, and then Cynthia, fresh six, looking for Candy Blastoise. This Blastoise just in general. I actually don't want to Candy this Blastoise. I'm just going to evolve him next turn, because I want that one on my active anyways. And this thing can't die in the current situation, I don't think. I guess our opponent could come up with something crazy and knock it out, in which case I'd have to reevaluate uh, what I was thinking. But I don't think he's going to die, and I think he's going to be all, all good. I'm just going to get him there. Another DCE from our opponent, so let loose. Uh, found him a lot of DCs, so he's set up and ready to go from here. There we go. Looks like the top deck Cynthia, though. Finally, be very surprised if we were not attacked by a Coffin here. Yeah, I'd actually be kind of shocked. So I expect to be attacked by a Coffin here, finally, from our opponent. There's a Tapu Koko. Um, can't attack with that, though. They already attached for turn, so it's going to have to be a... Or not Coffin. I would be surprised if they attacked with a Coffin. Weezing. I expect to be attacked by a Weezing. It looks like they whiffed the Weezing. Um, so things just keep getting worse and worse for our opponent. Um, in this one. It's fine with me that we're chilling. Alright, it's gonna be a slow follow-up from us. Debating Brooklet Hilling. I don't really want to put anything else on my bench right now. Go ahead, Rocket Splash for just one. Boop. Get rid of this Larvitar. And, uh, yeah. They're gonna struggle to just deal with this Blastoise in general. Let alone, um, a second Blastoise. We don't even really have to set up the powerful Squall Blastoise in this matchup, actually. We can... Um, it is overall ideal, so we can make sure we can take knockouts every turn, but, uh, the solid shell really slows down the spread decks, uh, by a lot. Coffin's gonna be hitting us for 10 damage. Um, their main way to actually deal damage to us is actually through Shrine of Punishment, which we also play, we do play four Brooklet Hills, so we have a lot of ways to deal with that, which we will, which we'll be trying to utilize, um, as much as possible. But we'll see, yeah, our hand is currently dead, so, um... There's ever a time for our opponent to take advantage of the current situation, uh, or this matchup, take advantage of this matchup, it is now. Besides us completely dead drawing off a of let loose, uh, our opponent, us, our, us currently not drawing anything like this, there's the shrine for them as well, is uh, about as good as it's going to get for our opponent in this matchup. Let's see if they can pull it together on this one. Here's a pokey gear. Yeah, shrine, shrine really does do the most damage to the Blastoise, doesn't it? It's almost kind of sad. Um... Yep, there they go. Come up, hit us for 10. These guys will take 10 from the detonation gas, and then uh, Shrine will deal uh, probably 20 to this. I guess we could top deck. I mean, we'd prefer to top deck a Blastoise here for sure. Get these unevolved schmucks evolved. Brooklet Hill is kind of cool as well, though. Um, and we will just go ahead and take that knockout with the Rocket Splash. They want to focus one of the Squirtles with the Spell Tag. That's fine with me. 
Like I said, we kind of only need this Blastoise. We can kind of just keep manually attaching and then taking knockouts. That's fine with me. And if we ever get a hand with like a decent amount of water energy, we could just GX attack, get a bunch of waters in play so we can just attack continuously for a couple turns. Um, but yeah, so this is this is what I would expect. I think this is the best play. Just commit all the damage to the active Blastoise. That seems correct to me as well. Take a prize here. Hopefully the War Turtle. Poke Gear is also pretty good. Find ourselves a draw supporter, hopefully into a Blastoise. Um... Yeah, looks ideal to me. Um, so yeah, once again, pretty good matchup. As long as we just keep drawing the way we're drawing, as long as we keep drawing anything, we're, we'll be good. That's all we need. It's pretty much anything. I'm debating benching this Articuno next turn. We don't want to really give, really give our opponent free prizes, but I don't know. If I get Lily off this, I'd probably bench the Articuno, draw that extra card off the Lily. It's probably worth it. Uh, we did break the Weezy. If we KO this Weezy in this turn, we will have broken the continuous, de continuous detonation gas, actually. Um, we'll knock this out and they'll have to send up a coughing instead of a wheezing, which means they won't get the detonation gas trigger um, going into their turn. Um, which is what you're trying to ideally set up with the wheezing deck is just continuous wheezings over and over and over and over again and make it so there's constant detonation gas uh, going on. There's the 10, 10 more from Shrine. The Squirtles are racking up the damage now. Alright, come on. Water energy is not good. Pokey Gear whiffing would be terrible. Did not whiff, thank goodness. Um, Attach active, bench Articuno, and then play the Cynthia. Looking for a candy. Blastoise, not quite. A little bit short. So I'm debating protecting one of these with Max Potion. I think that probably is the... I don't really want to do it, though. I don't want to let them just get knocked out either, though. This is a tough spot. Didn't really get enough energy to consider Giant Geyser GX either, I don't think. We would get one extra energy attachment into play, which would allow us to attack like for two turns in a row, but I kind of just want to max motion this guy. I could just let these die. That keeps the damage out of play. And then I could Ultra Ball for a new Squirtle. And then not bench it till... I could just wait to hold on to that until bench until next turn and just let these die. Okay, we're going to go with that. We'll get a new Squirtle next turn. We're just going to let these two Squirtles die. Um, Articuno will go down as well, so that'll be three prizes for our opponent. They still need to draw three more, so I think we'll still be in a fine spot. We will take the knockout next turn with a Rocket Splash. Um, save the max version for the turn after. Ultra Balling away our top deck plus Poke Gear, or Water plus Poke Gear, or maybe our top deck plus Water. Get another Squirtle, get that on the bench, and then look for the Red Candy uh, Blastoise on the following turn. Still just keep hunting down that Red Candy Blastoise. That's all we need. We're good to go. Uh, it's very hard for them to kill the Blastoise. Uh, Larvitar even doesn't hit that hard, even if they get it set up. Larvitar... Yeah, Larvitar is like the heaviest hitter into us, and it's just not quite good enough. Um, if they played something like a Rallyback Shaman, that would be scary. Um, but I don't think any Weezing deck plays Rallyback Shaman, so we're safe from that. Uh, we're definitely safe from that. Or if, if they play it, we lose anyway, so it's not worth playing around. I'm not going to play around a Rallyback Shaman. If they have it, they have it. I doubt they have it, so... Uh, one annoying thing they could do this turn, oh, they can't do it this turn because their bench is full. They could have done this turn would be to move all the damage onto the active and then knock this guy out with, um, the Lele, Lele promo. But they don't have bench space, so we're chilling on that front. They can't actually pull that off. Alright. So I think we'll just attach water to the active, make sure we can pull that off. Want to save the max potion, so we're going to go like this. Get ourselves a Squirtle. Last Squirtle, but we do have the Stretcher in there. Three Red Candies in deck. Let's see if we can't find one off this Cynthia here. Two, three, got the Max Potion again. No Red Candy, though. All right. We got Max Potion for a while. That's still pretty cool. Um, Rocket Splash. Get rid of those. All right. So we got two Max Potions, which is actually still pretty cool. We might just be able to win this whole game with this one Blastoise. Never mind. There's a Red Candy. Now we're in business. Max Potion next turn. Pull off the Powerful Squall. This game should be just about wrapped up after we take this next knockout on this next Weezing and get a bunch of energy in play with this guy. I don't think there's any way our opponent's going to be able to come out. We have everything we need at this point now. And there's Let Looses in play, so they're not going to be disrupting our hand. Um, unless they somehow knock this Squirtle out, which I guess they could do. Uh, well, not anymore. They put the counter energy on the Ditto. They can somehow make this Ditto a 
promo Lele and then go knock out the Squirtle. We could maybe be in trouble still. Even then though, I think we would actually just be able to win with just the one Blastoise. That's kind of how good this matchup is. It just kind of takes time. This one Blastoise kind of does everything for us. It just takes a matter of time, just a matter of time. But once we get there, easy, we're cruising. Uh, oh, opponent plays Choice Band, interesting. Not maxing out Spell Tag, I would have to assume then. Get a little bit extra damage in there with the Choice Band, but kind of drew everything we need. Getting that blast off the prizes was quite the, uh, or getting the right candy off the prizes was quite the blessing there. Max push on this guy. Boom. Full health. Or candy. Boom. Powerful Squall. Give me two of those. Boom. Attach here. Rocket Splash. These two away. Back to the deck they go. And knock out. 120. Give me a prize garden. What do we got? March out of let loose. Not bad. I'll take him. Boom. We can't even put him down if we wanted to. We just can't put another one, another Pokemon down. Don't think they're ever knocking out the Blastoise, so as long as we don't put down four other Pokemon for them to knock out, they can't actually win the game. Um put down three so if we wanted to let like if they go counter catcher this up and we want to let loose to try and dig for a, our last guzmar or something we could uh, which we probably would do if that did come to that uh, we also don't want to let too much damage build up in play either though because then our opponent can um as they are about to it looks like magical swap it around um and then maybe potentially kill this through that so i'm actually, I'm actually curious as to what the where they're going to magical swap all this damage to um no matter where they move it though we're just going to max potion it all away so I'm sure they'll concede after they see the max potion come down. Yeah, no matter where they move it, we're just gonna... It's just gonna get max potioned. 100%. We'll see, though. Then it's gonna take their time. It'll take a little bit of time for them to magical squab it around. Uh, but we do have the perfect answer in the second max potion. We got a little bit lucky there, I guess, to have the second max potion already ready to go. Uh, like we do. Um, I think the only way... The only thing that makes sense for them to do would be to move it all to the active. And then come up with some way to knock it out from there. Um... We'll see if they have different plans. I'm curious that they're playing the Fairy Lele when they play Treasures. That's definitely, as far as I can tell, a mistake. Because you want to be able to find... You could find it with Treasures. Um, maybe they just don't have the, the Psychic one and have to go with the Fairy one. Though I guess that's also a possibility. Um, so it looks like they're going to stack it all up on the powerful Squall Blastoise. Um, I don't know about all that. I don't think that really makes sense. They will be able to kill it, um, but we really only need one more powerful squall to hit a couple energy and we just win the game anyways. Uh, we will be max potioning it next turn because there's no reason for us not to. And yeah, I don't see this one working out too well for our opponent. Um, I think it should have been all moved to the active and then still once again, they're kind of just like praying for, for something super good to happen. But I think that's a little bit better of a... Better of a shot than what they're currently doing. I don't think this ever leads to a uh, a game win. I think potentially if they put it all in the active and then find some other shenanigans, maybe this feels like it never quite quite gets there though. All right, grab a squall. All right. I guess I should max push on this guy first. I would have actually moved it there. I guess one here is actually fine though. This, and then we got that Rocket Splash, discard those two, boom, boom, knockout, um, and yeah, that should about do it, we'll see if our opponent has any last shenanigans, I guess it's possible they could throw something weird at us still, um, but they would need a lot, this guy can pretty much one-shot anything I can think of that they could, that they could, that they could possibly have in their deck, so, even if they somehow one-shot this next turn, like I said, the only really thing is Rally Back Shaman, um, I don't expect them to have it. Um, that would be the only thing I would be ever scared of here, though, would be the Rally Back Shaman. So if they got that, they got me. Um, but if not, this one is just about locked up, I think. Um, yeah, there's a Flying Flip coming in, I think. But that's not going to do it. That's not going to quite do it for our opponent, I don't think. Um, the Ditto could cut, turn into something weird, potentially. Let's see. Um, they do have the Counter Energy there. Um, but yeah, there's the concession from our opponent. And we take a pretty easy dub. Just kind of took a little bit of time. So back to back. Pretty easy games here for the Blastoise. Um, and that kind of feels like how Blastoise, the Blastoise deck goes. It has good matchups. Um, and then it's bad matchups. Um, it feels like there might not really be any in between. The, the real enemy for the Blastoise deck is setting up, I feel like. So even when you have your good matchups, you just don't set up. You're not going to beat them anyways. Um, 
But yeah, I don't know. That's going to do it for this video on the Blastoise deck, guys. It's definitely a fun deck to play around with. Setting him up is very fun, and then your opponent just can't really deal with it. And you just keep sit there, and you keep punching your opponent down until you eventually win the game. They just can't, the Blastoise is huge. This, the ability is super good, um, keeping it alive. And yeah, just can't be dealt with once it actually sets up for a lot of decks. Um... So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to give the video a like. If you're enjoying the content, be sure to subscribe. Leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. Um, not only am I re-uploading to YouTube again, finally, I'm also uh, streaming on Twitch as well. Find the link for that as well as all my social medias in the description below. Have a good day. Thanks for watching and peace.